Hello, I am James Wilcock from jameswilcock.co.uk. Today I'm at Midland Railway Butterley Station to relive some of my childhood memories. We have all heard of Thomas the Tank Engine, or as it is known now as Thomas and Friends. With over 500 episodes since 1984, it is certainly fair to say the antics of Thomas, James, Gordon, Toby and the vast array of other characters on the island of Sodor have entrenched themselves in our psyche. You can also be forgiven for maybe not hearing about another series by the same producers. Featuring insanely high production values, huge explosions, wonderfully detailed models and eerily atmospheric sets, first broadcast in 1989, this TV show captured the interest and indeed hearts of many. So which series am I referring to? Of course, this is Tugs. Once you get over the stunning introduction music of Tugs, you are thrust into the 1920s, where you are presented with two rival companies, both vying for all of the best contracts. Starfleet, managed by Captain Star, and featuring memorable characters including Tencent, basically the Thomas the Tank Engine of the series. Looks like a team fish round you, Lily. Very funny. The small yet cheeky sunshine. Yes. <laughs> the outrageously snobby top hat. The older and wiser OJ We should work together, not fight each other. Never fought when I was a young tongue. And this is to name just a few. And their rivals, the devious said stacks, managed by Captain Zero, with Zoran Stuff him onto one. Okay, stupid. Zebedee. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Zack, Zug, and Zip. In fact, the character list goes on and on for Tugs, with Lily Lighthouse, Grampus, Billy Shoepack, but I must stop there. I couldn't have put it better myself. Sadly lasting for only a single series and featuring just 13 episodes, Tugs had a very short run, yet had a massive impact on many, including myself. Fans were forced to rely on pure nostalgia to keep the series alive, and the availability of Tugs today is extremely limited, appearing only on VHS and never DVD. However, thankfully the legacy continues, and to my surprise, I realised that within just 30 minutes of where I live, the actual models of the Tugs were well within my reach. How could I resist? I had to visit them in person and find out more. So let's now meet the fantastic team behind Star Tugs and enjoy an up close and personal inspection of the Tugs themselves. So Chris, mm -hmm. other than rivaling me with your absolutely ginormous camcorder there, how can you tell me about the group? How did you all get involved and how did you all meet? How did we meet? That's going back a fair old distance. I mean, most of us met sort of through the internet. We have nostalgic memories of Thomas the Tank Engine growing up as children and uh, we all sort of met through this this one forum, this one chat room, people who sort of remember Thomas in the 80s and 90s, and Tugs just happened to be one of those things that clicked with the handful of us as a, as a group. The first series of Thomas had been made by the same people who then made the Tugs. Both Thomas and Tugs were fondly remembered by us as model animation, well-written scripts, brilliant stories. So we had a fan page for the Star Tugs as well as the side piece. Because a lot of people on the forum remember Tugs, remember the details, the stories, and there'd always been the question, what happened to the models? Because you know what happened to the models with Thomas. You've seen them at Drayton Manor, you've seen them on tour. But no one ever wondered what happened to the props of the startups. And people would think, oh, they were probably skipped, they were probably thrown away, because it's been 25 years. It was actually one of my colleagues, Chris Signore, who got the email through from the former owner of the Tugs, who was going through a change of circumstances in his family and needed his spare room back. He had actually acquired the Tugs from a former television executive who had rescued them before they were due to go, to, before they were due to get skipped. 
one day I did a couple of blogs about a few Tux episodes just to bring awareness to the show and then one day I got this email for this chap saying i just seen your blog I've got a couple of boat characters for sale would you be interested in advertising them and when I saw the photos of who he had believe me I was dumbstruck I had absolutely no idea he was really looking for somewhere to advertise them as well as this online auction he was going for and of course I'll, I'll be friends with the rest of the the trust members for years due to our interest in railways and models in general and of course I really wasn't sure what to do so I just talked to the guys in question and it was like what do we do here and of course we've heard stories about various other tugs props and face masks being up for sale and pretty much hidden for the public eye and we really don't want the same thing to happen with the characters themselves or worst case scenario thrown in a skip if they're not sold so we decided to band together, put our finances, oil one group, and just buy them out as, you now one big group of our own. This was completely out of the blue for us. We had no idea that it was going to happen, and uh, we thought this was going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so let's do it. It was quite a surreal experience, actually, because the day that we were due to pick them up, we got heavy snow. I'm driving, I'm driving a van down from Scotland to Norfolk and it was snowing on the way. It was quite an amazing thing to see. You still going to Norfolk? Are you off, are you off your head? Because <laughs> now we own the tugs, we've bought the tugs, now we can start planning what we could do for their future and the future of the consortium. And that's when the Star Tugs Trust was born. So, Star Tugs, yeah. why at Midland Railway? So we knew a railway would be a decent home for it and we thought an empty railway vehicle would be a good place to, to house them sending some emails around with um, places that might like to have them. Midland Road was one of the few that got back to us and they seemed very, they've been very, very supportive from the very start. And they also turned around and said, yes, we've also got a vehicle you might be interested in. And I wasn't expecting to get both at once. So we, so they got, they got back to us and we went and looked at it in the yard and what have you. And s since that very first day we come down, they've been very, very supportive and encouraging of the project. We repaired the vehicle and yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> the coach itself is very strange with the sides. You have to cut the woodwork to the shape of the carriage. So I imagine it's all quite curved. It is very curvy, so have that detail into it as well, which is very tricky. And it's not like you couldn't just go to Ikea and go, OK, I want a cabinet here with a nice glass frontage. It's all built in-house, isn't it? Yeah, we have to do all the woodwork. Uh, basically have to uh, cut all the perspex to how we want uh, want it to be uh, which is very tricky and where did the grumpy face come from that I believe is a relic from when they had character engines down here for various brands and events and what have you and that that was laying around in the yard so and we thought do you know what <laughs> it, it just sort of fit and we put it on there for a laugh and it sort of stayed there since <laughs> Ryan, as indicated, you're one of the newcomers to the group. Um, uh, yeah. What is it like getting involved and how did you hear about it in the first place? I've been sort of a fan of uh, Tugs as the franchise from the very beginning when it was out on TV. Then I found out about the Trust back in 2014, roughly shortly after they formed. And, um, but the problem was they were always at shows where I couldn't reach. And then finally they were at Brighton Model World 2015. And then it's like, oh, brilliant, I can finally go see the models of my childhood. Saw them and I thought, I want to make a model of one of them. And then going to subsequent shows, finally came here at the end of 2015, bought one of my own model boats, and they uh, saw, one, saw what I can do model-wise and thought, oh, that would be a really good skill set to have as part of the team. Sean is really the only other model maker um, so it's he can only devote so much time to getting any repairs done so now there's extra hands that can get them fixed and restored which is brilliant let's be honest these things they're 30 years old some of them Big Mac being the prime example has had so much damage and wear that they need a lot of TLC so what sort of damage and wear did Big Mac particularly have? Right, Big Mac, he is the worst off out of all of them. Um, I've just recently done structural repairs to it, so he is now structurally sound. The next job is the paintwork. But 
what happened to him his deck was cracked superstructure cracked wheelhouse cracked um the deck had split off the hull just a plethora oh and the eyes needed adjusting as well because it was catching on the inside just the plethora of things that needed doing and all credit to the previous owner he had done a good job of repairing them but unfortunately the glue wasn't quite strong enough it was good enough to hold it but not not uh, indefinitely so this is where I've come in now looked at what needs to be done and done it to the highest grade possible uh, where I've uh, looked at uh, some of the models include especially Big Mac the electronics are quite far gone um, because at the time they didn't really have LEDs they used tiny a grain of wheat bulbs which is just a miniature light filament light bulb and if the filament hasn't gone the wires have corroded and snapped so of course that is something that we can replace with more up-to-date parts. Just give me a little bit of background about your modelling to get yourself the experience to be involved with something like this. Um, well it's really I will say this Thomas and Tugs I put sole blame on that um, as to why I love model making so much because growing up with things like Thomas, Tugs, Thunderbirds you see the physical model and it's like oh, I wonder how that works or how did this go together for example where the old Thomas series with the smoke coming up underneath the train uh, I saw one scene where a character moved off and you could still see the smoke coming out of the track but that then told me, oh, so that's how it works. The engine's not doing it, it's coming from underneath the track. So I can take that knowledge and apply it to my own models. So I can put a little smoke generator in the track to do the exact same effect. So you've certainly got a lot of tugs in this collection, but uh, OJ's got a bit of a story behind him, hasn't he? Oh, actually he has. I mean, when production on tugs finished back in 1989, all the models were apparently put in storage, apart from OJ for some reason. He was actually rebuilt into a basic paddle steamer tug, Lakesider, that was used in Thomas the Tank Engine, notably in Series 4, along with some other various props and models from tugs, like the cranes, the fishing boats, and another paddle steamer character, the Fulton Ferry. But OJ's was really a surprise to us all, because when Ryan and the others found the models for themselves for the first time, when they opened the crease, they were surprised to see that the original OJ cabin and funnel was still inside, kept in a nice hidden compartment in the model itself. Whether it was by the original model makers when they converted the OJ model as a gesture of their own free will, or just to you know, keep a spare in case, anyone who knows, but it's just really nice to swap and change the various OJs and Lakeside um, props, whatever you want to. We do have the entire Starfleet, sadly um, uh, with the exception of Top Hat, which we do get asked quite often about because he is one of the most popular. Sadly, we cannot say where he is. It could still be out there unless someone literally comes to us with the physical model. We're, you know, we're clutching at straws for finding anything else. Zed Stacks, we have all five of them. We have the fire tug, who still has all his original fire hoses, which is nice. We have Lily Lightship, very prolific character, one of the few female characters, but very prominent role. But also we do have uh, a lot of moulds and patterns um, for things like hulls, also uh, Top Hat's face masks. We have all bar one of them, so at least we have something of that character that still exists. Sally Seaplane. That's not actually the original model. No. It's actually a replica, but a very good replica indeed. How did that come about? We, uh, we were in contact with uh, the original model makers and we were able to put together a crowdfunding campaign to raise the money uh, to get her built by original model maker using original plans. But a lot of people have been a bit confused because they notice her eyes are different. That's because this is how Sally was built in the very first place. This is her first version. And the eyes that you see on the TV episodes, that's how it was built. That was how it was modified later. Because then those eyes were more in keeping with all the other models. But what's also nice is where we can see what original parts were used, especially off the shelf from model shops, a lot of these are still made nowadays, even if they're made abroad. Uh, for example, the tiny little searchlights you see on their hats, still made in Germany. 
which we which is a brilliant thing because if anything needs replacing like those little details we can still source them what we're trying to do we are trying to preserve them as best we can hence why we've got them behind the perspex glass to ensure that no further damage comes to them we try and keep touring to a minimum and the amount of tugs that we take out on tour because I mean, we know the ones that we can't actually take too far because like van shake and that kind of thing you really do have to be careful when you're driving them about. What other trinkets do you have from the Tugs era? We've got uh, quite a collection of uh, merchandise. Uh, just uh, recently we were uh, donated some Japanese toys because oddly enough Japan actually got uh, more merchandise than the UK did which is ironic considering it was made here but they've got a plethora of different things made. There were obviously the videos, bath sets, you name it, Japan made it with Tugs on it. And it had so such high production values. I mean, even compared to early episodes of Temis and Friends, it's the explosions, the atmosphere, the sets, it's just insanity, but it's wonderful. Absolutely. I mean, episodes like Munitions and Upriver and High Tide, you could definitely tell they were more than a basic Thomas themed show, really. Again, it's where the Jerry Addison feel comes in terms of the, the dramatic suspense and the action. And of course, a touch of cobbles are here and there. What sort of events do you have here that surround Star Tugs and what upcoming events types can we expect in the future? We've got uh, Spooks and Ghouls, which we have um, here at uh, Butterley. And what we do is we decorate the exhibition to fit in with the theme. So it's something else for not just the fans, but for visitors to go and look at as well. So we do everything in there. We even do noise motions. So we've got um, spiders and webs that go on um, all the tugs and um, we put sweets in so like little trick-or-treats um, and we, we just go over the top a little bit but even if the fans are like oh god you you know you're putting them on the tugs they like it because they get different pictures with the tugs that they wouldn't normally see so we've got that one that's in October and then there's a bonfire one which blends in with the fireworks so we normally use fire tug for that um, and we don't that tends to go in with the Halloween theme really because there's not really a lot you can do for bonfire then we do the Christmas event which is Santa's here that's at Midland as well and we decorate that um, Santa theme Halloween we've got the cauldron that has all smoke coming out of it we've always got sweets for the fans and the children as well it's just a family thing rather than just individuals come in so who actually does the decoration Me. And who actually face paints? Me. I've done a face paint of one, a cast myself. I did it for Halloween just to see what reaction we got. And let's just make that clear, it was a cast, it wasn't yeah. the original. It was. Uh, that was a lily one where I put different lashes on her and made her look very like a pumpkin, so to speak. So she blended in with Halloween. So there is always something different. So... Star Talks, what can you tell me about the new exhibits which no doubt lend themselves to keeping the visitors arriving? Well, in terms of new exhibits, it usually tends to be a case of as and when we actually get them, because quite a lot of the exhibition as it stands now is built up over time. So when we started out, it was mostly just the character models that we had and a couple of spare bits and pieces that happened to be in the boxes at the time. But as we've managed to get ourselves together a little more in terms of acquiring the coach and getting all our contacts from the old show itself when we've been able to build up things much more over time so pretty much all of the molds that are in there just now were donated directly by the model makers themselves after we've been able to get in touch with them and explain a little bit about what we'd managed to acquire on our end already you know it never fails to amaze me every day i see something new we even managed to get a couple of them down at some of the earlier events so they could actually see for themselves because most of them hadn't actually seen the models themselves since they put them back in their boxes in 89 so because of how far scattered it is it's usually as and when we can actually find it and making sure we actually space it all out as well so because you don't want to blow everything at once it's probably unlikely we're going to find another tug somewhere out there we'd love to find another <laughs> tug but you know we have to be realistic is it just going to be face masks uh, what other things do you think we'll find i wish i could tell you i mean <laughs> well for the record we still don't know where top hat and grandpas are if we knew you'd all be the first to know 
Don't worry, they know where I am, I think. But yeah, that, kind of like as I was saying in the last question, it's more a case of as and when we get any new leads on stuff and depending on any new contacts that we're able to make out. As I said, we've been able to get in touch with the original model makers. They'll have their own contacts on their side and friends who might be able to know what had gone where. You've got schematics here, for example. Yeah. So that's not an obvious thing you might think when coming to the Tugs exhibition, but it's a crucial element to how they began. And yeah. it's just all these little things that amount to what is Tugs. Yeah, and again, kind of like the thing with the blueprints, those came a little later on as well, because I think even some of the model makers can't remember the stuff they actually have stored away in their own attics. So. Yeah, even the people who actually own the stuff tend to be surprised that they have it. <laughs> so how much contact do you have with the original model makers? I mean, there must be, when you have that contact, quite a good resource of information. Oh yeah, they've been excellent in helping us out with contacts for, obviously, old, other old crew members, but also just in general in terms of the model making side of it. Because they've been, like Ben, our resident model maker, he's been able to get some good tips off of them to help try and restore the models we've already got. How can we find out more about Star Tugs? There's, um, we've got three places. We've got social media presence on Twitter and on Facebook. You just search for the Star Tugs exhibition on either of those. And there's a lot of up-to-date, like real-time updates on what we do on there. Um, or we've also got a website, www.thestartugs.co.uk. And on that, we try to keep that up to, as updated as possible as well, where you've got the, the history of what we do, where we've been before, where we hope to go all the condition of all the models, like the work we do on them, because we do do 90% of the restoration of them in-house. We try and keep everyone up to date with that as well. We can be a bit more in-depth on a website rather than you can on social media, and between the two, it sort of covers where we are, as and where. But main thing is, come down and see us all. Well, of course it is, <laughs> yes. I mean, um, what we want is for people to come down and see them, because you find yourself getting immersed in the whole thing. They, they evoke a certain personality, and you start looking at details that you wouldn't have looked at before and what we want is for people to spend time in there and actually have an experience not just come and see some models and that's what we hope to do in the future is the next sort of expansion of it is what can we do that's an interactive thing how what can you do to, to make you stay like give us suggestions because what we want is for it to be we're doing this so people can enjoy themselves so what we want is feedback so then the next time you come down you see something different and it, you give it that little bit more of what you wanted could not do without the help of the fans and I must say thank you guys so much for everything you used to do. Thank you for everything and thank you for everything you've helped us achieve and everything you're going to help us achieve going forward. This is Tugs. I hope you enjoyed this mini documentary and if you did please like and subscribe for more fascinating videos in the future.